side of the cabin. And that's where the sun's coming up. This is uh, June 20th. I want you to notice it's 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm already bringing in 75 watts. I just got this hooked up yesterday about 1.30, so I wasn't able to do a complete test on it, but today I will. And you can see where I put it, right behind where the love seat's going to go. That blue mark is about where the top of the love seat's going to be. So that's what you'll be able to see, even though I got all the wires and everything else running down. I put the inverter the inverter out in the battery box. So, all right, it's 10 after six. It's already producing over 100 watts. You can see where my shadow is. That's where the sun is behind me. Shining right on the solar panels. And the one here on the end, that one there, that's the very first panel I bought from uh, Windy Nation over four years ago. And it's still producing electricity. So, that's the setup. And the wire management is always the last thing to do. So I still need to get this in some sort of a wraparound conduit, I guess. There's uh, all 16 batteries. And I put the inverter out here. Only because I didn't want to listen to the, the fan noise. And of course, it's the charge controller that blows all day, so. Uh, 200 amp fuse in there. Four odd cable from the inverter to the batteries. And today, my project is to build a frame to hold four of them, the last four I got, up against this wall, leaning out this way, to face pretty much directly south. Already got the measurements. I'm going to need to do some cutting and nailing and screwing and all that sort of stuff. That uh, surprised the hell out of me when I flipped the switches yesterday after getting all everything all wired in and hooked up and connected and all that. It worked. <laughs> That's not normally the way things work for me. <laughs> I hadn't used anything out of the batteries and it never put in more than 720 watts. And that was with the refrigerator running because it had been off for quite a few hours yesterday morning. Uh, and there they're starting again. It's like me and my sister. Do you guys ever quit? And here it is, 7 o'clock in the morning. And bringing in 193 watts. So I'm so much farther ahead with the panels up here facing east and west than I was with them facing south on top of the awning for the RV. Alright, it's 8.20 in the morning. And I'm bringing in 410 watts. 
All right, it's 1230, which is exactly halfway through the day. You can see that the, uh, this wall is still pretty much in the shade. Watch out, Ruger. <laughs> and there's the peak of the cabin right there. And it's, uh, so I have this place pretty much facing directly south and north on these ends. And I thought that it was interesting that uh, this wall never got sun directly on it at noon. I thought for sure that this time of the year it would have got uh, sun at this time of the day, but nope. All right, this is going to be how much energy my new 6,000 BTU uh, Danby air, window air conditioner uses. And it's not very much. Jumps up to 120 as the fan kicks on and then it slows down to 72 or whatever. The compressor is not on yet. But it must have a built-in uh, soft start. It takes about 30 or 45 seconds or so to kick on. Anybody who knows these kilowatt meter things knows that it will show instantly. There goes the compressor. See, 445, that's it. It never jumps up to a thousand or whatever, which I was really worried about. This is a 12.1 sear air conditioner. Now the compressor's on. The air's still not quite cool yet. It's getting there. Now it will slowly increase until it gets to about 490, 495, sometimes 500, depends. But I like how it doesn't jolt the system or fry my inverter or any of that sort of stuff. Great little air conditioner cools this place off too much. You see I have it set on 80. If I leave it on for very long, I'll turn it up to 82 to get it to turn off because it gets too cold in here. All right, it's about a quarter after two in the afternoon. About 105 outside. And the air conditioner's been on for about 15 minutes and it's still in float. So I would say that's a success. Can't do any better than that. Still bringing in 600. It was down to about 180 watts bringing in, then I turned the air conditioner on, jumped up to 650, and still 13.3. I just wanted to show you that I'm not totally heartless. Even though I swore up and down I would never let Remy in the house again. It's been too hot to keep them both outside. So with the air conditioner on, I let them inside so they can cool off a little bit during the hot part of the day. Go away, Remy. <laughs> Jeez. Go lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Good puppy. Good late day. Alright. So like I said, I'm not totally heartless. We're like 106, 107 today, so had the air conditioner on. There's the uh, panels on the uh, east facing roof. All hooked up, all running, all working. Today will be the first day that I've had everything all hooked up and running. It's just past 7.30 in the morning. And you can see that they're pretty well getting good sun. And as I said, it's just past 7.30 in the morning. And you can see that the sun is already shining on these panels. 
Granted, they're not getting a whole lot of juice right now because uh, the angle is so oblique. But they are getting sun already. So it won't be a total wash. And the final piece of the puzzle is finally here, installed, hooked up, everything. Um, got the last four panels all mounted. I had to I used the old temporary solar panel mounting thing that I did for the last two winters. I cut it down to size. But the way I have it set up is these are on their own separate charge controller. And it shuts off when it gets up to 13.7, 13.7 volts on the batteries. So most of the day, the big charge controller and the 12 panels up on the roof will do everything I need. In the afternoon, when I turn on the air conditioner, it will drop it down below 13.7, and then these will kick on and keep it fully charged and keep the, uh, the batteries fully charged, keep the air conditioner running, and never drop the batteries down so that when I shut the air conditioner off at night, the batteries aren't depleted. So last night, without these even hooked up, uh, when I shut the air conditioner off, uh, the battery was at 13.1. So I'm hoping today that when I shut it off, and that was at six o'clock last night when I shut it off, I'm hoping tonight when I shut it off, be a little bit later, I'll have 13.5, 13.6, you'll see. Um, yeah, I got, like I said, I got these on their own separate charge controller. The 12 on the roof are on their own separate charge controller. This is on a 30 amp Windy Nation. These four here are on the 30 amp Windy Nation charge controller. The six up on the roof are on the Midnight Classic 150 charge controller. And, I learned that when I have the air conditioner on, I need to have a little more air circulating through that battery bank where the, uh, in the inverter is. But apparently it was getting a little too hot. It has a thermal shutdown. When it gets over 149 degrees, it disconnects. So that tells me it was getting over 149 degrees. So all I did was I opened it up a little bit and it ran fine all day yesterday. So. I'm so happy I got these last four done. All right. It is tonight, same evening. And that's where the sun is setting. Working west, of course. Now, when it went up and over, it actually had this side in the shade a little bit, and the other side was Still getting a little bit of sun from the south side. So it started out behind me to my right, went up and over the, the cabin, and now it's setting ahead of me on my right. So that's the way the sun travels for the summer days, for the summer solstice day. In six months, I'll show you what it does on the other side of the cabin.